It may surprise you somewhat to learn that during 2021, the UK sales of light commercial vehicles rose by over 21% over the preceding year. And that's despite there being a global chip shortage, um, the electronic type, not the oven type, thankfully. And also we were in the midst of the dreaded C word. Now that's thanks in part to the construction industry getting back on its feet and of course our love for online retail therapy. But the startling figure for us was the fact that during 2021, sales of electric vans rose by over 141%, despite the fact that most people still prefer their van to be fueled from the black pump. You can see things are obviously starting to change. But does an electric van work? I mean, let's be honest, you are a business owner. Whether you're a, a butcher, a baker, or indeed a candlestick maker, you've got deliveries to fulfill, customers to satisfy. So does an electric van work for you? Well, have no fear, because Auto EV is here to help in our first of our new van reviews. So, without further ado, welcome to the first of those new van reviews. Welcome to the Toyota Pro Ace Electric. And as always, welcome to Auto EV. <laughs> Now, before we go on to this week's review of the new Toyota Pro Ace Electric, it is of course that time where I ask you to like the video, subscribe to the Auto EV channel and press the little bell button down below so you're notified of when our next video goes live. If you've been a supporter of us so far, thank you ever so much for being so, because by being one, then obviously it allows us to make great content such as these new commercial vehicle reviews. If you're not a subscriber, please consider becoming one. So. Let's talk about electric vans, because whenever I talk to someone about the job that I do and we talk about electric vehicles, the two things, the two barriers that come up for most people is range, uh, efficiency and cost. And those are two things that's going to be really important to you as a business owner, your efficiency of your vehicle and the cost of it. So hopefully with these reviews, we're going to be able to answer those questions for you about electric vans. Now the Toyota Pro Ace, if this looks familiar to you, then well, it possibly should because it's actually part of the kind of commercial group, if you like, the Stellantis, the artist formerly known as PSA, also make um, vans off the same platform, which is the Vauxhall Vivaro, the Citroen Dispatch and the Peugeot Expert. But it's the Toyota Pro Ace that we've got here and it is in a very, very competitive market sector. It's that sort of medium one ton van sector. So. Let's take a deeper dive and find out what it's all about. And of course, first things first, styling. Well, we're not going to get too hung up on things like styling, but let's be honest, it's a lot of money. So you still want it to look good, and as I say, it's representing your business. So is it a good looking van? Yeah, I think it is. I think they've done really, really well. You've got your nice bold Toyota logo at the front. It's very, very similar in terms of its panel work too, as I say, it's commercial partners, but it's at the front where you see the most difference with the Toyota kind of headlights, these nice chrome kind of flashes in the grill, the big badge, as I say, very practical, big plastic bumpers at the front here as well. And then around the side, we've got a big bold electric badge up here, which I'm not really sure is necessary if I'm honest with you, but I don't know why we need to shout about it being electric, but there we go. Uh, charging flaps mounted at the front, now we'll go on to charging a little bit later on, but interestingly enough, there's still a fuel flap on the side of the van as well, which is just, well, not openable. So that sheet metal work stays the same. So don't be fooled by that, it's closed off. You can't open that. Now Toyota only do the Pro Ace in one uh, wheelbase length. It's the medium, so you don't get the compact or the long wheelbase version. They say that 80% of the sales of the Pro Ace are that medium length van, which is why it's the only one that's available. And there's only one trim level available too, but again, we'll get onto that a little bit later. Um, standard 16 inch steel wheels with the plastic wheel trims but of course you've also got on both sides twin sliding doors which are nice and handy and the doors themselves open up fairly big and wide with a nice step in as I say onto that in a little bit of a second and at the rear well yep you've got your twin opening kind of barn door style um, rear doors which of course are perfect for any van driver relatively slim tail lights that allows good width into the loading bay coupled with a very low loading sill as well nice practical black bumper there with its integrated parking sensors and a high level brake light at the top so overall a decent looking van if not quite as kind of desirable looking maybe as customizable 
is something like a Ford Transit, Mercedes Vito or Volkswagen Transporter. But let's get on to practicality because that is the key part with any van. Now, when it comes to the practicality section in a car review, we just find out whether or not you can fit four suitcases in the back of it and how comfortable it's going to be for rear passengers in terms of their headroom and legroom. I think it's fair to say you're going to get four suitcases in the back of a Pro Ace and you're not going to be really worried about head and legroom for passengers because you're not going to be putting anybody in there. Unless, of course, you're a serial killer. In which case, you're not going to be really bothered about whether they're comfortable with legroom. Yeah. Anyway, um, let's talk about practicality. The rear doors, they say, they're sort of barn style here. And they open up either side as this. But of course you can then extend them up to a 180 degrees just by flicking this little lever here and they'll open right up. Now forgive the iPad because there's a lot of numbers to go through here. Now, in terms of your load width, it's 1,282 millimetres and the height is 1,220 millimetres, which is a bit lower than the Mercedes Vito, which is 1,252 millimetres. Maximum width between the sides is 1,628 millimetres, but then between the rear wheel arches, that's going to fall to 1,258 millimetres. But either way, that's more than enough room to take um, enough space for a standard size Euro pallet to fit in. Interestingly enough, you can also load the part, that size pallet from either sliding side door. They open wide enough to get this standard Euro size pallet in. Now, the load bay length of the Pro Ace it's 2,512 millimetres at floor level, but you can extend that up to 3,674 millimetres by use of this smart cargo system, which basically has a, a drop down hatch there so you can load longer items such as ladders or scaffolding poles underneath the passenger seat. You can also option it with this anti slip uh, lining, which is fitted to this car, or of course, you could just go with plywood lining if that's your bag. The rear steel bulkhead with guard and window is standard also. Now your maximum payload weight you can take is 1,226 kilograms, but be warned, the Pro Ace comes with two battery sizes, either a 50 kilowatt hour or a 75 kilowatt hour van. Now if it's a 50 kilowatt hour van you have, that's fine, but if you go for the 75 kilowatt hour like I have, that payload capacity drops by 226 kilos to just 1,000 kilograms. Both battery sizes are also capable of towing a braked trailer weight of up to 1,000 kilos but again a word of warning with the weight of the van and then obviously a trailer on top of that you may need a tachograph so please do check your weights before you start towing heavy trailers around interior okay let's go on to that because actually it's quite nice i have to admit it's very very similar as you'd expect to the citroen space tourer which is the kind of people carrier um, that we drove and obviously because that's based on the citroen dispatch so this interior is very similar to what you get with the citroen the peugeot and the Vauxhall vans and it's both good and bad let's start with the kind of good stuff because it's a really comfortable place to spend time in i actually drove the van believe it or not to a car launch and um, which was on the other side on the east side of london the other day and i took this van and it was a really nice place just to spend a bit of time um, so, so like those kind of urban drive delivery things, you're going to get seats comfortable, it holds you well, you get a good driving position, the, the steering wheel's adjustable, the seat's got enough adjustment, you can height adjust it as well as obviously for fore and aft. It's comfortable, it holds you well, you've got good under thigh support. The other two seats that you have across here, obviously you've got the, the bench seat for another two passengers here. But it's this middle one that's quite interesting because, let's move by iPad a second because you can flip up the squab to give even more storage down in there you know for notepads or or whatever or sandwiches and then the backrest will then fold down to give you this really handy little kind of workbench so if you've got you know your laptop or your iPad that you need to well, a strap on it you need to work away on that's really good with a little kind of storage bit at the back so really handy just flips back up there you've also got a nice armrest on this side as well so good comfortable place for driver and passengers there's a reasonable level of storage in here as well as i say you've got the kind of big bin at the top there just chucking notepads or ipads or laptops in you've got a nice little shelf in there to stick your mobile in there's 
another couple of little shelves there a glove box that flips up that's got enough storage in it and another little bin there that also has a 12 volt charging socket and the passenger airbag deactivation and it's got big door bins way down there but they are quite a drop down you've really got to get down into them and also the cup holders at the top here there's two on either side they're okay for taking things like a Costa coffee cup but they won't take my big you know stainless steel coffee mug or a, a standard size kind of water bottle so yeah, it's not ideal also i'd quite like to have maybe seen a little bit of above storage here a shelf above here or something for putting maps or notepads in as well but on the whole the storage is okay what's the rest of the cabin like well again good and bad the pro ace only comes in one trim level which is the icon and there's no real options to add on to it this is what you see is what you get so you've got things like electric mirrors but they don't fold which i think would be a really handy thing to have if you're trying to squeeze through particularly tight areas of you know sort of like urban environment you might be delivering to there's electric windows obviously on either side as well but there's an awful lot of blank switches as well that you don't get so things like heated seats you can't have on the car um it's got apple carplay and android auto which comes through this sort of like small sort of like seven inch screen up here which is perfectly adequate and as i say i used it to navigate using apple carplay across the other side of london the other day also got dab radio and bluetooth as well so that's quite handy um and there's some shortcut buttons on the side which are relatively easy to kind of get to standard air conditioning but it's not climate control so again it's just you know sort of like your standard manual air conditioning system there's the USB port in here, which obviously connects up um, your phone there, so either charging or using, as I say, the Apple CarPlay or Android Auto. And then you get another 12 volt charger down there. But as I say, there's no additional kind of cup holders, and there's, there's no, you can't option up a bigger screen. That's what it is, that's all that you have. The steering wheel itself is made of the same material that you get on the dashboard, which is quite a kind of hard plastic. It's okay, it's a nice size relatively comfortable to hold and obviously it will wipe you know clean quite easily your column stocks fall nicely to hand obviously you've got your your wipers on the right here you've got lights on the left and the car does come with automatic lights as well there's cruise control um, and a speed limiter system which is set up on this secondary column stock on the left and then another column stock on the right below the wipers that controls your media so volume um station select track select depending obviously on what you're on so that's quite handy as well so yeah it's, as I say, it's a real kind of mixed bag a relatively flat floor so if you've got a central passenger there's a nice area down here but you can't really kind of from a driver's point of view easily kind of get across because this is your transmission here effectively you've got the little toggle switch that we've seen in the other psa offerings here so we've got um park by via button reverse neutral or drive and then a sec another one with b for the brake regeneration which i'll come on to when we drive the van to the left of that we've got a drive mode select because obviously you've got three different driving modes um with the van and, and again i'll explain that more when we're driving it but basically it's either normal which is your kind of baseline and or you can go eco um if you want to get the last the little bit of mileage out or power setting um, if you want a bit more sharper throttle response and to get the full power from the van so as i say it's nice it's a pleasant place to be it's very comfortable it's a good driving position there is as i say a, a nice fact that you can kind of wipe everything down clean the storage is okay i'd like to see bigger kind of cup holders but my big beef is not being able to sort of like a bit more personalization a few more options which would be quite nice which you obviously get on some other vans and being able to sort of maybe option up a bigger screen but on the whole a good effort and as i say a nice place to spend a bit of time in now the pro ace comes with a choice of two battery sizes either a 50 kilowatt hour battery which should give a wltp range of around about 142 miles or this one the 75 kilowatt hour variant which should give a wltp range of around about 205 miles all very well and good you say that's great a little bit of a word of warning however that range soon drops off because vans are very different to cars in the sense that they carry more weight and obviously they're less aerodynamically efficient through the air so if you're dropping off doing little deliveries around about the urban areas then it's pretty much ideal when you start hitting the motorways as i found out the other day on the m4 that range soon drops and that was with an empty van a little bit of weight behind it well not so ideal anyway 
charging it up because again you're going to want to focus on how much downtime the van's going to have during the day and again the pro ace is pretty good you've got a charging ability of up to 100 kilowatts which means that you can go from 10 to 80 percent in the smaller battery van in 35 minutes if it's the bigger 75 kilowatt hour van that you option up then that charging time just extends up to 48 minutes both will charge from a 7 kilowatt wall box from between 7 and 8 hours depending obviously on what you have now you can option them with an 11 kilowatt three phase on board charger as well if that's the type of charging box you have so what's the Proace like to actually drive? Well, in one word, pleasant. That's it. I mean, what's quite nice driving a van with electric power is you don't have that kind of diesel engine chuntering away in front of you. So it's actually really quiet, really refined, which is really nice in a van. Um, you get a good commanding driving position. As I say, the seat's very comfortable. Um, good visibility the mirrors could do with being a little bit bigger i would say the mirrors are a little bit small and one thing i have noticed and i will pick toyota up on this is there's not a huge amount of active safety systems in the car in other words blind spot monitoring lane keep assist i mean that's the type of thing that we're seeing now on cars and having driven the van through the middle of london the other day a little bit of blind spot monitoring would actually have been quite handy and i'm surprised it doesn't have it if i'm honest it also doesn't have a reversing camera which again given the sort of the costs of electrics or electronics coming down now i'm kind of surprised because you can get some quite basic cars with things like blind spot monitoring and, and, and reversing cameras on them. So to not have them on this, I think is a little bit of an omission, if I'm honest. Anyway, otherwise, as I say, it's a really pleasant thing to drive. Um, the steering's a little bit slow. In terms of the actual drivability of it, that's the only thing I can... Well, that and the brakes. It seems like I'm finding more and more things as we go along here but let me explain for a second the steering I think is a little bit slow you know, there's an awful lot of arm twirling goes on at both applying lock and taking it off and the brakes well it's from the PSA platform sharing cars and I've always been very critical of their brakes they've got a little bit of deadness in their first initial travel and then it kind of happens this isn't quite as bad now whether or not the whole group has taken it upon themselves to start changing or whether toyota have a slightly different setup i'm not sure but there is still a little bit of it there albeit not quite as much as i've seen before otherwise i can't really criticize a lot more the ride's okay it's when you've got it empty like i have you can feel it being a little bit choppy but i think that's quite a common trait with vans um and there's a little bit of bump thump through it through the suspension noise you can hear going across these transverse ridges but it's not uncomfortable as i say the seat's in a nice position i've got good support around it as well you have 134 brake horsepower um applied through a single front mounted motor but that's only the power rating when you're in the um when you're in the power uh, setting so in other words this drive mode select button i've got down here if i go into the power setting that's when i get all 134 ponies if i'm in normal then that dials it back to 104 and limits the torque as well and if you go back to eco then that reins them all back in to just allowing 81 of them to go rampaging off so yeah so just just be aware of that um single drive transmission which is again par for the course with all of these cars and vans now um in terms of the brakes going back to those you do have some brake regeneration and that's done by this button down here that says b so when i press that um and i lift off the throttle it gives me some braking now it's not quite one pedal driving but it's not far off it's reasonably good and what i will say again having driven it in the city the sort of lack of feel from the brakes if you will that lack of sort of like sort of like that nice kind of touch that you get from that initial bite that's not there on this van is kind of removed by having that b button pressed got good view of the instrumentation the dashboard itself is actually very very nice um, i've got uh, a speedo on the left 
I've got a sort of like an economy meter on the right that tells me whether I'm the battery is charging, whether it's in the eco mode, which it is at the moment, or whether it's in the power setting. So in other words, if you're really accelerating, it goes up into the power. You've also got a battery um, meter on the top there to tell me how much I've got. Um, there's also uh, an actual digital readout for the uh, for the miles left as well, which is handy. And then also the other thing I've got there is a digital speedometer. So yeah, on the whole, very, very good. As I say, nice easily, a nice easily laid out cabin, which is nice. I keep saying nice, but it is. And yeah, this is good. I like it. Now, pricing for the Pro A starts from thirty-six thousand five hundred and forty-five pounds for the fifty kilowatt hour van. That jumps to forty-two thousand one hundred ninety-five pounds for the seventy-five kilowatt hour van like I have here. And both of those prices also include the £5,000 grant that you get from the UK government for buying an electric commercial vehicle, which is different to cars because obviously the grant is more and there's no threshold, there's no ceiling with it. So irrespective of the price of the, the vehicle, you get that grant for running an electric commercial vehicle. And those prices obviously are correct at time of filming. But it's more than just the cost of the van you need to consider, obviously, because there's running costs. Your business is, needs to be efficient. And it's here where electric vans do win slightly, because obviously it's cheaper to fill them up with electricity than it is with diesel. Um, the servicing's different, because obviously you don't have engines, you don't have oil changes, you don't have timing belts to think about. Obviously there is still servicing because there's things such as tyres and brakes to consider. But interestingly, Toyota give the Proace a three year warranty from new, but you can extend that up to 10 years. So a manufacturer's warranty you can extend up to 10 years if you extend it when you service the van, which is usually roughly every two years. So that's pretty good. They're warranting the van for that length of time. And also the batteries are also warranted for eight years or 100,000 miles, whichever comes sooner. But the other cost that you do have to factor in, especially in this day and age, are things such as congestion charging in inner cities and ultra low emission zones. That's where you're really going to win with an electric van. So in terms of competition, what else is out there? Well, of course, its biggest competition comes from the artists formerly known as PSA Group. It's partners in this commercial programme. So of course, things like Peugeot Expert, Citroen Dispatch and the Vauxhall Vivaro. They're worthy of your consideration. You've also got the Mercedes-Benz with the e Vito, And although it doesn't ha quite have the range of this van and it is a little bit more in cost, it is a Mercedes-Benz and there is a little bit more options available on it as well. So that could be a consideration. And it's also a van that we're going to be testing very, very shortly, albeit in slightly larger passenger carrying form. There's the Maxxis which is um, another worthy consideration for you and the big contender of course is being the Ford Transit. Now it is the UK's best-selling commercial vehicle and it is about to come out with a fully electric Transit. So yeah, life's not going to be easy for the Pro Ace. So here's what we like and what we don't like about the Toyota Pro Ace Electric. We like its refinement, its comfortable cabin, the choice of battery sizes, the decent range on offer from the 75 kilowatt hour variant and Toyota's warranty package. We don't like. There's only one size available with one trim level. There's a limited amount of options. The active safety equipment could be better. And the brakes. With our increased awareness of air quality and therefore the advent of low emission zones in some of our city centres, not to mention congestion charging in others, going electric for your business is now possibly more important than ever, especially now with our appetite for retail therapy. It's odd because it's a bit like the motorcycle industry. It's taken the commercial vehicle industry a little bit of time to catch up on where passenger cars are, but it's off to a really, really good start. So what do we think of the Pro Ace Electric, which is bizarrely, if you dismiss the Lexus UX300e from its sub-brand, Toyota's first fully electric offering? Well, it's good. It's, it's very good. It's refined. It's comfortable. It gives you the choice of battery sizes to suit your business. It's a really, really good place to start. Yes, we'd like to see more options. We'd like to see maybe a different actual length of van or more sort of like ability to spec it how you want for your business like you can do with some of its competitors. But as I say, 
if you need to go electric for your business, this is a really good place to start. Thank you for watching Auto EV and the first of our van reviews, of which there are going to be a lot, lot more. So if you have enjoyed the video, please remember to like it, subscribe to the Auto EV channel and press the little bell button down below so you receive notification of when our next video will go live. If you've been a subscriber of ours up till now, thank you very much for your continued support because every little helps. We're also available on all social media channels as well, so Instagram, Facebook, LinkedIn, Twitter, all of that. We're over there as well, so please remember and give us a like. And if your interest goes past vans and you want to see what some of our electric car reviews are like, well, you can head over to autoev.co.uk where you'll find our back catalogue there, or just stay on the AutoEV YouTube library and you'll see them all. All it remains for me to say is thank you very much for watching. I'll see you again soon. So, you've watched our video. It's now my job to tell you to like and subscribe and press the little bell button to receive notification of when our next video is uploaded.